So today we are going to start with forecasting using Excel and this is our data setting. I'm using a time series from 1996 to 1999 December. So it's a monthly data series and here one of my variable is Cape size new building order. So Cape size is a ship type and the number of new building orders of this type of ships. And then we have the China iron ore import data. Okay. And then I have the Cape size iron worry rates and the freight rates are from this port in Brazil to this port in China. Okay. And this is USD per ton. It costs about 9.75 USD in January 1996 to transport one ton of iron worry from Brazil to China. And then in February, it was about 10. 0 0.09 per ton. So that's what is our main variable of interest and this is the variable that we are going to forecast. In uh, quite a few upcoming videos, I'll, I'm going to illustrate with this variable. So these two, so this one could be seen as a supply variable because this is the number of new building orders. So that means how many ships are coming into market and this could be seen as a demand variable. Okay, so one of the major importers of iron worry from Brazil is China. So that's why we're looking to the demand of China. Okay. So I will not be using these two variables for quite some time. They will be used only when we were working with multiple linear regression. So for now I'm going to hide them. Okay. And I'm going to only deal with this variable here, iron worry rates, and you can see the variable. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to set my training and test sample. I have a very small sample size, so I have about 48 data points. So if I follow the 80-20 rule, then my 80% would be 38, okay, 38.4 data points. Yeah, we can say 39. But if I look on 39, uh, that would be here actually. So it's it's actually kind of middle of the year, you know, so it doesn't really look nice. So what I'm thinking is I'm just thinking of going for the last six months from here, July to December. This period I will consider as my test sample, out sample period, okay? And I'm going to mark it with yellow or maybe some other a bit, a bit more soothing color like this one. Maybe. So that's how I'm going to use my sample. So this is my training data part and this is my test data part. Also for now actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do dynamic forecast, okay? So we will train the data, but when we are doing the modeling, we will be doing dynamic forecast. And that's a bit different from a static forecast because after, after this point, after this point, we will assume that we do not have any data. So we will be sitting here in June and we will forecast the next six period. Okay. Okay. Now let's shoot. So now let's start with, with one of the first forecast models. That is the naive forecast. And here is a representation of the naive forecast. As you can see here, we have YT. So YT by YT, we are referring the forecast value at time T. It could be today or it could be tomorrow. So if we think about YT as tomorrow, then what we're saying is that uh, the, the value of forecast tomorrow will be yt minus one, that is today. Or if I think about yt as today, so my forecast value for today will be same as my value yesterday. So I knew the real value yesterday and that will be the value of forecast today. So that's the simple night forecast. And to do night forecast, actually, what we will be doing is we will just press equal to, and then I will select the previous time period. So when I'm forecasting for February, my forecast value will be the one I have in January. And then again, when I'm forecasting for March, my value will be the one in February. Okay. So it will just go on like this. And then we can actually just drag it up to this point. Okay. So you will see it's always referring to the previous point as the forecast. And when we are here, we can actually still have this value as our forecast, okay? Because we knew that value and it could be our future value. But after this, we do not really know any of the other values. Okay, so what will be the forecasted values for these periods? So it will be actually the same value because we don't have access to the other values. I will just copy this value and paste it as number and then I will just drag it. 
So it will be the same value if I do dynamic forecast. If we are doing a static forecast, then the value will be this one here. And then here we will have 6.56, here we will have 8.06, here we will have 10.5, here we will have 10.18. Okay, so it will be like that. So now let's say we have that knife forecast, but we want to see how good is our knife forecast. And then for that, we will need some accuracy measures. And in most of the examples, I'm going to show you only the calculation of MAPE. Okay, for simplicity, I'm all, I will only do the MAPE, but if you know how MAPE works, you will already know how the MSE or RMSE or MAD, those works, okay? So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the equation of MAPE here so that we can see it and our life will be easier. So here you see what we have on the equation is the error AT minus YT. AT is the actual value and YT is the forecasted value. So this is our forecasted value, right? And this is our actual value. So we can just create a cell here with error. What we will do is we will say, okay, we just take the absolute ABS of our actual value minus our forecasted value. So that's our error, forecast error. And then at the same time, so we divide it by AT. So I'll just do it here. Sometimes some people will create another cell for divide, for dividing the value, but I'll just do it here, okay? So then I divide it by our actual freight rate. So here actually we can see how much is our error in terms of percentage of the actual value so it's about for for this date here for for month of february the if we go for night forecast our error percentage is about three percent okay and then i'll just drag it so if i double click it scrolls it, it puts value up to the end and then we have all the values up to this point okay you see all of them are done properly so now, if you look back in the equation, what we do is we have this part, right? And then in the end, we take the average of this, we divide by n, n is the number of observations we have, number of data points we have. So we take the average of it to get the mean value of the errors. So to do that, what I will do is, I will just create a cell here, and I will say average of all these cells multiplied with 100 okay so this is our overall mape but normally it is a good idea to do the map calculation for the in sample and out sample or in other words test and training sample right so i'll just say train mape and then test map pe okay so for the training sample i will just take the average of my training period so average of all this period multiplied with 100 and for the test period the average of this period multiplied with 100 so what we see is that if we do dynamic forecast okay so if we do dynamic forecast we see that our overall MAP is about 9%, 10%. That's pretty good. For the training sample, the MAP is about 6%. That's actually pretty good. And then for the test, test sample, we suddenly have a 35%, about 34 to 35% of error. So that's not really good. Normally we want our MAP to be less than 5%. And now in the upcoming videos, we will be forecasting the same variable with some other methods. And our goal would be to get a MAP value for all overall test and training lower than the one we have here. So we will use this naive forecast as a benchmark and we will try to see if our other advanced forecast models can do better.